Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy simmons Garthway. Hi guys, I'm Carly Garrick. And we're doing a take two because apparently the first one we were all staticky and gross. So now we have to make believe like we didn't just have the conversation we just had, which is, how was your vacation, Carla? My vacation was great. I would like to apologize to folks back home if I sound <laughs> a little snotty. Yeah, you know. I did come home with a cold, but I had a fantastic, fantastic holiday. Awesome. So it was really nice, a little bit of me time, kind of, um, the conference has sort of evolved over time. Mm. It's it's 10 years old now, which is kind of shocking to me. Because we're only and, like 35, so how is that possible? You know, I, I, I definitely celebrated my uh, oh, that, 29th, yeah, 29th something. in uh, Mexico. Yeah. Actually, it was my birthday a couple of days ago. So I flew back on Sunday yep. for my 52nd birthday. Yep. I flew Nothing. all day. But you know what? I made every connection awesome. with this much yeah, time that's okay. because uh, everything was tight, but I got home, I left at 8 in the morning, and I made it home at 12.08 oh, at night. That's so a long day. It was a long day. I was hungry a lot. Uh, but the conference actually surprised me. You know, it's called Anarchapulco. Yep. It's supposed to focus more on the anarchy side of stuff. Yep. So, um, And it used to be very crypto-y mm. and very uh, party, hard-charging, hard-partying. Uh, I may not even remember the uh, first time I went to one of those. But, um, but this time the vibe was really different. It had sort of a very health vibe, a lot of uh, talk about therapeutic use of uh, of, of you know psychedelics. Mm. Um, I didn't get a chance to do any of the interesting stuff, but I kind of wish I had had time. Uh, Bufo was the one everyone was talking about, What's which Bufo? I, I guess is some toad poison. Mm. And I was like, I don't know. I'm good. I'm all, for a yeah, whole day yeah. sounds like I'm good. what I want to be doing today. How about I just go uh, <laughs> swim in the ocean and eat and some CBD right. instead? Exactly. Um, but yeah, you know, it definitely felt like there's this um, mindfulness, yep. consciousness, how do we become better humans mm. for human flourishing, a little less of the focus on politics. Yep. And, it's not always all about politics. But you know what was kind of cool too, is there were a bunch of free staters there. Yep. I actually, uh, Jay Noon and mm -hmm. um, his wife Sholin were there with the kids. He did like a whole thing on, on teaching children with farming, how mm -hmm. to homestead, how to get the dopamine loops going in the right way with children, i.e. a reward system that's yep. based on actually doing something useful, not putting a candy in a basket on yeah. a screen, say, but actually putting an egg in a basket in yeah. real life. Um, and, uh, and a couple of other free staters here or there. So there was a soft note of like New Hampshire, New Hampshire, <laughs> New Hampshire happening, which I think is important because I think really the story now becomes as the world becomes more authoritarian and more totalitarian and all of that, there are gonna be these pockets of light, yep. but that New Hampshire in some way is really our Mecca. Yep. This is the place where like mindfully people are well, coming and I think, to build something. And I think it's the same concept as like why we have the first in the nation primary here is the same mentality. It's because New Hampshire is a smaller state. We're not like some monstrosity of like, too big to be able to manage. manage. You yeah. know, you, New York State is so out of control. Like you could move every freedom-loving person in the world to New ha to New York, and you still wouldn't be able to rein anything in. Right. Where in New Hampshire, you know, where we elect legislators from our own neighborhood, and where we, you know, everybody knows somebody who's a legislator. We are definitely a smaller um, mindset of people. Right, and and it's more controllable because in some ways, I mean. For me, of course, what I'm doing in New Hampshire is just literally uh, localism on yeah. steroids, right? It's like the same force or driving thing that people have, like, hey, let me fix my own neighborhood. Exactly. We're kind of trying to do that, and we're doing it on a... So for me, I'm doing it, and this was really what my talk was about to some extent, but, you know, it's sort of uh, the units of size, right? Yep. So, like, you know, you, you could try and save the world. Or, or you, you could just save this. Save a country, or yeah. you could try and save a state, or you could try and save a city, or yeah. your neighborhood, or your house, right. or ultimately yourself, yep. right? So I think it, you know, we've been it trying. It scales up, but you can't just jump in at the big size. Right. And you can, you're just gonna get very frustrated because you probably won't see the results that you hope to. Right, and also I think it actually does start on on the 
individual mm -hmm. level, right? Yep. And then, I mean, I might actually posit it starts on the cellular level, right? Like the, your mitochondria. Yeah. How is your energy being expended yeah. in the world? So I was enjoying all Good. of the woo, um, but I'm also looking forward to our next yes. conference, so, which is um, coming up, right? New Hampshire Liberty Forum it is in its 16th year. Because wow. again, we're only 35 years old, so I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> um, but it, it's taking place this year, um, Friday and Saturday, March 15th and 16th. I keep getting those days screwed up. Um, at the Doubletree by Hilton in Nashua. Um, it's a week, weekend long conference full of sessions and panels and talks and keynote dinners and lunches and cocktail parties and, you know, camaraderie and all that stuff. Um, there's a lot of great speakers in the lineup even before today. Um, Glenn Jacobs, who's the mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee, Tennessee, who's also Kane in the WWE world, is doing our keynote on Saturday night. And can I just say, this is a gentleman who did come out and do Liberty Forum like many, 10 years, many Michael. moons ago, because I remember yes. I met him at Murphy's right here down the street, and I remember just being like, you know, it's this He's big huge. wrestler yeah. guy. And, um, and he was surprisingly um, shy, yes. for lack of a better term. Um, and very um, humble, yeah. actually, for someone who's like a wrestler. Yeah. I remember him being like, oh, no one's going to want to come and listen to me. His talk back then was like standing room only. Yeah. He's a great guy. So, I mean, I would come just for him. Yeah. So he's doing Saturday, but all day, all day Friday, all day. Um, we also have Brian Kaplan. Yeah, right? Brian Kaplan, who I'm going to get that wrong. I'm not going to try to say where he's from. George George Mason, Mason yeah. So University. he's a Friday night keynote, and he was just so that people yeah. know, like he he was involved with like if any, anyone's heard of Freakonomics mm. and sort of like that that podcast and sort of taking complex uh, economic ideas and kind of breaking them down in ways that are like um, people can digest, accessible yeah. to, to to ordinary dummies. Um, um, but we have like subject <laughs> like matter from pronatalism to oh, there's all sorts of talk about education and about why New Hampshire is um, the liberty place that it is and the success. We are the cradle of liberty. The successes oh, that we've here. made and, um, you know, there's been gun laws and all the different laws that we've actually moved the needle on. Um, there's a lot of uh, speakers about crypto and blockchain and um, zoning and all sorts of interesting things. All the um, wonky stuff and then. And then, dun, 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 literally like uh, within an hour before I got here after a few days of very, not patient time waiting um, on Saturday morning for general admission holders. This is not a VIP like our keynote dinners are VIP ticket holders. Okay. This is general admission ticket holders. So anybody who has a ticket for um, Liberty Forum would be able to attend. We have um, Tulsi Gabbard speaking Yay! on Saturday morning, which awesome. is really, really exciting. Um, the first one thing that I didn't realize is she's a lieutenant colonel in the military, which absolutely like, I'm like, wow, cause she's like this tall. Um, but that'll be a great kickoff to Saturday. Saturday's just gonna be an amazing day. While you were gone, you, things that you may have missed. Um, we have a lot of great sponsors. Uh, we picked up Young Americans for Liberty as nice. a gold sponsor. So Excellent. they're gonna be doing some stuff with legislators. Um, so if you're a legislator and you happen to watch this, watch your email for like a great discount. And just come, and, you know, come But I mean, it's, a, it's such a fun event. Um, we have great lunches laid, lined up. Uh, we have exhibitors, you know, and if you're, even Liberty Curious, I guess I would say. It's, I think people get this misconception of what these types of events are about. <laughs> and we're not, I mean, we have like a panel on food freedom. We have uh, a couple different slots on right to know because there's a lot of subject matter that people might not be that super familiar with. And if you listen to a 50 minute talk on something, you might be like, oh, now I understand what that's all about. And actually I was watching, uh, you know, Julian Assange, who is mm. a hero who is being persecuted by the global elites because he told the truth about war crimes and all the mm -hmm. really bad stuff that they're up to and basically has been tortured for the past 11 years. Currently has his extradition hearing in London. And so they're trying to, uh, America is trying to extradite him from England to come to America to stand uh, trial for treason under the Espionage Act for acting like a publisher, like the New York Times would. So if they want to, if they want to hang Julian Assange, there's going to be a lot of us who are going to start mm. calling for the hanging of, you know, Everybody. maybe some of the other editors. Well, that, I was going to say, there's so much. You see this in so many things, and I. I, I 
I just think we're at this bizarre tipping point that if four years ago you had told me this was going to be the pivot point, I would have said probably not. I think more and more Americans are just realizing how much, how often and how sincerely they are lied to and manipulated. And I just think that that's why people are starting to push back because, you know, it's one thing when uh, people try to frame what Assange did and make it sound like he was committing treason. But then when you actually explain what he actually did, if you actually listen to what happened, just like with so many different things, you're like, well, that doesn't seem like that would even be illegal. Well, because it wasn't. Well, it but wasn't. if you just make stuff up. But okay, so here was the tie-in. You used the yeah. words right to know for the right yes. to know panel, right? Which is one of the things I've been working on for a long time because I believe with openness, you get truth. When you know what's true, you know which courses of action to take, right? Like it's very dangerous. And I believe we're actually at this stage in history where departments in the US government are actually acting on the propaganda of other departments. Like I actually think that there's so much mal and misinformation out there that no one really knows what the hell's going on. So yesterday I was listening to the extradition pre-hearing and it was sort of put on by his team. And one of the lawyers, or maybe it might have been the editor of of WikiLeaks itself now, used the words right to know, right? In this very global human Mm -hmm. rights sense, right? Where they were talking about, we as the public have the right to know what our government is doing, because if we don't know, you can't have consent of the governed right. if we don't, if we don't know, know what we're consenting what to. We're consenting to. And we saw that so clearly under COVID. They overplayed their hand. I think they made a giant mistake yep. there. But I do think we should start thinking about these issues globally in the sense of right to know for all people, yep. right? That is a drive towards truth across the entire globe, which may or may not apparently be a sphere or a globe or some flat piece of something, because that was a big talk, and I was like, really? Are we, there people? are still no. people who, yeah, I don't get so, it. But so that's so interesting, because actually, I believe that is purely psyops. So I believe all the flat earth bubbling up is, uh, P, uh, is, is intelligence agencies purposely dialing it up so that all the conspiracy theories that they like to call conspiracy theories that are actually true, right? Also now look crazy because we're talking about flat earth. Because you are dragging it all into that Mm -hmm. same basket. And that is exactly what's happening there and probably also with the aliens, although, you know, I would like (laughs) it to be real aliens. I don't know what's going to happen with the aliens. Um, um, So Tulsi Gabbard is a huge It is huge. Um, She's pro-peace. Like, she likes to stop and think about, like, why... We're in certain areas. She was one of the few people I heard she, talking about NATO, which is, you know, what you need to be talking about if you're talking about the Ukraine. has a new book coming out in April, so it'll be after this. Um, and if, I'm going to probably get the title wrong, but I think it's titled Why I Left the Democrat Party. Yes. Which will be very interesting. Um, so March 15th, 16th, Tulsi's on the 16th at 9 o'clock in the morning. You can get tickets at nhlibertyforum.com. Uh, there is a wide range of tickets available right now. You can come for the whole weekend. You can come as a VIP. You can come a general admission. You can come as a student. You can just come on Saturday, and you can just come on Friday night. We have given you more options than you can choose. Ooh, 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 and, oh, ooh, ooh. am I kicking? Oh, did oh, I just kick you off? Y- well, I nope. don't know. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay, we're back. <laughs> um, so, anyways, I just wanted to mention wow. that before I ta- started talking about what I was going to talk about. Um, it's funny that you use the word consent because a piece of paper that I have here says has consent. So, um, the legislature meets on Thursdays, and this past Thursday they met, and one of the bills that came up, which has gotten a lot of worldwide or attention. bigger than New yes. Hampshire attention, was House Bill fourteen nineteen. Um, The title is Relative to Prohibiting Obscene or Harmful Sexual Materials in Schools. So, where to begin? Um, If you watch the video, which I did this morning, (laughs) I I I had seen clippets of it. So this bill, in a nutshell, says, if there is a book or some materials in the public school um, that a parent finds, believes to be obscene, 
or harmful sexual materials in the public school library or in the classroom. Currently, they could probably go to the principal or something, and the principal could make a decision. But then what? Well, if you don't like the decision, this says if you didn't like the decision of the um, principal, and that it could be appealed to the school board, and if you didn't like the decision of the school board, you could appeal to the Board of Education. I don't think that sounds totally crazy. Isn't that how it would work anyway? And, yes. Well, apparently not. So, um, and then there is, I mean, there is some teeth in here that says if, if an um, educator, and there's a whole definition of what constitutes an educator, will, willfully um, just ignored all these decisions, they could be fined. They could be fined $1,000 for each instance and all these, and it would be, um, a, you know, a, a ding on their file and all this stuff. But that's only if you've totally usurped what the legislature would say is supposed to be the process. So this doesn't sound like a totally crazy bill. So um, Representative Glenn Cordelli, who I believe is the chair, he's either the chair or he's on the House um, Education Committee. My friend Kristen Noble from Bedford, who's a state rep, serves on education, and she did a great floor speech on this bill at a different part of the day. Um, but literally, they have, are sharing with the public these pages from these books and all these things that you're like, why is that in the school? So, like, so just to set the, set the scene for folks back home, basically, uh, this video, which you can go find, I mean, it was picked up by Libs oh, of TikTok. Libs of TikTok like, has I it. I mean, it's, it's sort of viral at this stage. But it's basically, so it's a state rep reading from a book that is available in the school library. Yes. By which he is just taking the book and being like, I am reading from this book that is in the school library. And as he starts oh to God. read, which is pretty uh, um, graphic, graphic. In a, in a, uh, stuff. Yes. The, the, the entire everybody like everyone it, erupts so and they're even, like, you have to be quiet, even the, you have to be quiet. Even the speaker, I started writing things down because I was like, listen to, I mean, he's literally just reading stuff. There, there was one part that he read that was basically, um, I don't know what it's from, but it was describing a rape of a young, young yes, like I was like, what? I mean, a, a young person not consenting to sex in, in detail. And then there was another part that he was reading about different, I don't know, it's just bad. Now, I've seen Kristen shared and um, different pages, and there's things about sexual intercourse, and these are not health class type pages. These are telling people that if they like kids, that if they like porn, they should be careful to figure out where they're getting their porn from and do some research, and it's just, it's <laughs> nuts. So, I mean, so there's Rep Cordelli speaking, and you hear the, the speaker say, um, it, he interrupts him, you can't say anything graphic. And then he, Cordelli continues, and he says, please, keep it in the proper perspective. And Cordelli continues, and he says, keep it civil without getting into graphics. And Cordelli continues, and he says, I'm trying to make sure nothing too bad gets spoken. And I'm thinking, <laughs> Too bad listen to spoken. this. So meanwhile, the, 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 you can hear the whole re the room like up in arms over this. So Lucy Weber, Democrat, gets up there and says um, she makes a motion basically to cast a vote whether or not they're going to allow Representative Cordelli to keep speaking. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they take that and it fails. 201 to 173, so he gets to continue to speak, and they are outraged over this. They are just downright outraged that he... And, and See, they don't want the light shone on it, which is why it is so important. That is why keeping it open At one is point, Lucy, crucial. Lucy Weber, when she's making a, a parliamentary inquiry on one of these, I forget which, says, we, uh, we understand that... Um, some of this may be offensive to many and triggering to some, and I'm thinking, we're literally <laughs> training our you kids to vote with this whether psycho this shit. is appropriate educational material. Because you have to remember, <laughs> a school library is not the same as a public library. It is a schools are meant for education. If it's not educationally beneficial, I don't think it belongs no, in the or school. Or it depends. What are they educating for? I mean, it sounds like grooming. It's I mean, if you awful. have stories about non-consensual so, sex so, that you're giving to young children, it sounds. I'm not fishy. sure where. Um, so they they let them continue, and then another um, representative Tanner gets up at some point and said, makes a motion to table. The motion <laughs> to table passes, and for the PI in that, this Democrat rep Myler gets up 
And one of the lines from his little parliamentary says, if I believe an individual parent has a right to select books and material that are appropriate for their children, but they cannot have the right to make that for all parents. And I'm thinking, but that's not what this bill even does. If you don't think that this is right, why are you so afraid to vote on it? Because you might actually be saying that we think it's okay for there to be obscene materials in the school. So um, I don't, I'm not sure where Corinne Moore, she's a state rep, I'm not sure where she's from. She's the one who triggered the whole libs of TikTok thing. She says, choosing to read a book is different than a creepy old man trying to force you to listen to him read out loud. I guess some of you need to learn about consent. Oh. Yes, you should, <laughs> Corinne, learn about consent. And forcing children, taking away the rights of parents from protecting their children from material that they do not find appropriate for their children's age level or education. Who's consenting to that? I have a solution to this entire problem. I do too. It's called an we education just, freedom account. Yeah, we should just uh, privatize all schooling. We should allow people to send their children where they want because when you when you design systems that have to cater to the lowest common denominator, which apparently is groomers, I don't know, I'm confused here, then you end up with this nonsense. Now, the, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, that's The fine. good thing is, is I believe this might have been the week prior, um, the House passed a bill, HB 1665, which expands education freedom account yes. criteria. So it went from, um, I think it's 350% of poverty to 500% of poverty. Um, so that means that a family of four making up to $150,000 a year would be able to be afforded the opportunity to have their children go to an education system situation that works for their child and perhaps doesn't include obscene materials. Um, then. I, and let's just remind folks back home, this is so important. <laughs> so just because you're used to the way schools were, right, or mm -hmm. have become, right, it doesn't mean that they're not better solutions out there now. We know that, you know, you could do Zoom teaching. You know that they're the best teachers on YouTube for X subject. Mm -hmm. There's all this decentralization that has been created because of technology and because of the way the world works now. Why are we stuck in this 1840s because, Prussian because paradigm? it's not about education, <laughs> it's about teachers unions. It's, well, well, it's not about education. It is also like, I forget if it was Malcolm, I think it was Malcolm X, uh, 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 it's either Malcolm X or MLK, but I think it was X who said, never let your enemies educate your children, right? right? So we know that something in the schools is creating little socialists who come out. And so why don't we allow more competition so that we can see well, and then the what works? And kids learn differently. Well, and if nothing else, it would improve the quality of the public education, the public schools. Because when you have competition, it forces people to find better solutions and more alternatives, and that's how, that's how things get better. And here's a concrete example. So let's say there was actual competition, right? And, and so you knew School X allowed these yes. offensive books, right? And School Y didn't. And suddenly all the parents want to put their kids in School right. Y. Maybe, maybe you then understand in School X that- Something's uh, not right here. Maybe that this product right. is not what uh, is working for families and stuff, right? So there's, through competition, we're also creating a feedback loop to let people know, because if you're just, you if know- If you're just repeating, we're not solving the <laughs> We're not- We're not making it better for the kids, and if we're not making it better for the kids, we're not making it better for all of our futures. And we wonder why, like, things are just continuing to disintegrate and disintegrate and disintegrate, but yet we don't want to address what very well may be a big part of what's causing some of that disintegration. I mean, and, and I think that's a reality because I mean, it's hard not to look at what's happening and go, are we devolving? Like we've, we've I, gone, we've I gone I felt from, like we were doing so well. And then like, now it's all just crazy. Like you just, and yeah, it, it does. It's like you're watching a movie and you're going, are we really living in this movie? Cause this is crazy. Well, you know, and, and so again, I think when it feels overwhelming to people or you're like, how do I even start and whatever, you just start with yourself, 
think about how you can improve your health. I was actually really impressed. I brought this in. I just picked it up at the airport. It's like breathe, anti-inflammation, natural healing, sound sleep. And I, I like to pick these up. You know, they'll come out from time to time mm. and I'll have, you know, one will have mind health, how to de-stress, whatever, right? But what struck me in this one is it was actually a pretty solid summary of all the good things we should actually be doing that are quite simple and not that complicated. And if you maybe have, I think most people are feeling inflamed yep. because when you're injecting things that trigger your immune system, it is going to have a response. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just the given, whether you're like pro-vax, anti-vax, whatever. Vaccines do stimulate your immune system. That's their job, right? Mm -hmm. So whether they're stimulating it to fight the virus or they're stimulating it to fight you, right, on right. a cellular level, something's happening. So if you're feeling anxious or inflamed or something's just not right, maybe you're tummy is not feeling good or whatever, go look for this, but also go look for the solutions that might help. And maybe the starting point to go look is anti-inflammation, mm. because I think that that will give you, you know, an entry point in to uh, finding, um, finding some, some health solutions for people, because it's not going to get better until people aren't sick and I think Fair. we have a pretty diseased by which I mean diseased diseased society and we've got to heal it and we got to heal it one person at a yep. time that's my spiel for this week. um so go out there and check out nhlibertyforum.com you can buy your tickets there if you have any questions you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com um it's going to be a great weekend and we'd love to see some of our viewers there um Oh yeah. I mean, I'm excited for Tulsi. That's a I'm big get. Her she spoke at Freedom Fest last year. It was the most popular talk. She smoked uh, Bobby Kennedy. Uh, we have great other speakers and it's a great way to come meet the uh, the certified extremists of <laughs> New Hampshire. <Yeah. laughs> um, that's all we have time for this week. We will be back next week. I might bring back another education topic. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, if you have any suggestions, shoot us an email and we'll do our best to help you out. Thanks, That's all guys. we got. Bye. Bye.